It's ranked 14th at 133. Brody Teske will take on Colby McLean of Northwestern. McLean falling below 500 with a loss on Friday against Blake Cushing of Nebraska. And Brody Teske. Giving up a good 10 pounds here. Yeah, Brody Teske weighing in at just under 133. Colby McLean at about 140 and a half. So as you said, Andrew, just about 10 pounds between these two wrestlers. And Iowa has not lost a duel against the Wildcats since 2005, 12 in a row. And that one was here in Evanston 19 years ago. The Wildcats now a lot of ground to make up if they want to change that. Also 12 straight dual meet wins. Dating back to last year's duel against Penn State. That one coming up in just about 10 days as the Hawkeyes and the Nittany Lions will face off. Now Colby McLean trying to fend off Brody Teske. Teske trying to go around. Collecting a wrist and separating away is McLean. Oh, can Brody Teske run around the back here? Colby McLean. Teske not looking, you know, too undersized here. He's still owning the center of the mat and, and getting McLean to the, the circle there. So as he earns that stall call. Stall call on Colby McLean, true freshman for Northwestern. Finished second, the Michigan State Open, sixth at the Cleveland State Open. And he's taking on Brody Teske, wrestling just the second match of his career at 141, that first one just two days ago, a decision win against Will Basinger of Illinois. Brody Teske has been a staple in this Iowa lineup at 133. But giving Real Woods a break. And Brody Teske now gets the first takedown against Colby McLean. Now the first two Iowa wrestlers were content to cut their opponents loose, trying to rack up bonus points by takedown. Brody Teske, on the other hand, looking for near fall points. Three swipes, four swipes for Brody Teske. Looked as easy as it possibly could there. 7-0 lead and now looking for perhaps the pin on Colby McLean. Short time here, Colby McLean has to do all he can to keep both of his shoulders off the mat. Well, another near swipe. And man is Brody Teske manhandling Colby McLean on the edge of the mat, trying to use that head to just tilt the body of McLean over to the backside. Yeah, it's been a bit of a trial by fire for some of these younger younger Wildcat guys. Um, as you mentioned, you know, the this, this schedule from here on out really, really doesn't get much easier for, for the Wildcats. And uh, nor would it for the Hawkeyes, so. Well, the Big Ten, arguably the nation's best wrestling conference for Northwestern. Their next two opponents also ranked in the top 20 in Wisconsin and Minnesota. Four of your first five Big Ten opponents are ranked. If you're Matt Storniolo, you just have to see some grit, some tenacity from your wrestlers. So the results may not be there, the growth needs to be. Now Brody Teske running around the back to get his second takedown. Brody Teske, a transfer from Northern Iowa. Three-time NCAA qualifier. Also wrestled at Penn State for two years. From Pennsylvania, attended high school in Iowa. Four-time state champion. And now just a second season wrestling in a Hawkeye singlet. And a 9-3 record truly showing how capable he is for the Hawkeyes. Well, Colby McLean has a stall call, cannot run away too much. And just look at the movement 
And the awareness from Brody Teske knows where he is on the outside of the mat, keeps his body inside of the circle to secure the takedown. Yeah, Teske's doing an awesome job, attacking both sides of the body there. And um, much like Schriever, you know, totally impressed with these guys just moving forward and, and looking uh, to break uh, break their opponent's position and look to point it, put as, put as many points on the board as they can. Well, we talked to Tom Brands before today's meet, and he said he wanted his wrestlers to get better. Well, I don't know how much better you can be. They've been almost flawless. And now once more, Brody Teske looking for near fall swipes. Has at least three, four. Now looking for the pin. Can Brody Teske roll him over? He can't. But the near fall points will be enough. Brody Teske, 17 to one victory. And Andrew Iowa now three tech falls. We've yet to see a match go the full seven. Bull have not seen a match go to seven minutes. But this is one of those marquee matchups we were talking about earlier in the open. Jared Franick ranked number two, transferred from North Dakota State. His opponent, Trevor Chumley, ranked number 19. One of those leaders in the locker room for Northwestern. Perhaps his toughest opponent yet of the 2023-24 season in Jared Franick. Frannick, a very experienced wrestler, finally able to kick everything into gear last year, won the Big 12s, then went to the NCAA tournament, finished fourth, his first All-American finish. And he has not stopped that 17-1 this season, just one loss to Michael Blockus. By decision in the duel, Trevor Chumley able to keep his right leg away from the hands of Jared Frannick. You can tell the demeanor in here has kind of changed now that uh, we got a solid match up here. Well, Trevor Chumley had an opportunity there, but Jared Frenick able to turn up and spin away. Trevor Chumley, the only wrestler for Northwestern to record a win against Nebraska, did not see Peyton Robb. Instead, against the unranked Ethan Stiles in his dual meet debut for the Cornhuskers. It was a close match, just eight to five, Chumley able to pull that one out. Now our last match before the intermission, heavy hand fighting between Trevor Chumley and Jared Frenick. Super impressed with Trevor's just ability to, to grind that match out on Friday. You know, we talked about how he's training for Rob and looking forward to that matchup and, and doesn't get it. You know, that can that can totally affect guys and and how they approach their match. And, Awesome to see him just, you know, move forward and and uh, proceed business as usual. So, and don't expect a very high-scoring performance from these two. They've met once. It was at last year's NCAA tournament, and it was Jared Frannick who pulled off the win in the second round against Chumley, five to three decision. And now Jared Frannick looking. To secure that right leg, now has the left of Chumley. Forty-five seconds here, left in the first. Well, Chumley in that waterfall position. Now back to a stalemate for these two guys. Trevor Chumley, a two-time Illinois High School State champion. Jared Frannick, a four-time North Dakota State champion. Wrestled almost 300 matches for West Har Fargo High School. Some really heavy hand fighting there from Frannick. You know, seeing him, seeing him cl club Chumley and getting his feet moving there. So, physical match so far. Five seconds left, no points here at 157. Yeah, we're not, not seeing Chumley get to his, uh, you know, his bread and butters that that single leg, much like we talked about on on Friday. Uh, shows shows glimpses of Ryan Deacon in that shot there, and uh, 
Trevor Chumley finishing fourth at the Big Ten Championships last season. This await recently occupied by Ryan Deacon, Northwestern's last national champion. And Trevor Chumley, first on the board, first Northwestern wrestler to go ahead here in this afternoon's duel. As he escapes Jared Frenick. Now a stall call on Chumley. And the take no prisoners attitude of Jared Frenick has served him well, taken down a number of ranked opponents this season. Joey Blaze, Peyton Robb, Jude Swisher, the list goes on. And trying to add Trevor Chumley to the list. Seeing Frannick uh, control most of the action so far in this match on their feet, but you know that stall call is uh, totally going to change the dynamic of this match here. So should expect Chumley to ramp up his attack rate, and you know much like we just saw him do there with that that short offense from uh, the front headlock position. So super dangerous there. You know, seen seen him score all over the place from from that position. And a couple of times now we've seen Trevor Chumley try to go around the corner, but Jared Frannick quick. Able to just keep Chumley from really having a clear opportunity to score a takedown. Big snap from Frannick, now up. Now Frannick in. Was in on a high crotch, but Trevor Chumley. Yeah, it's a low scoring match, but we're, we're seeing both these guys just work their tails off to, you know, to break the position of their opponents and got to really appreciate that and, and the kind of just work ethic and, and energy that goes into that, so. Nice little attempt from Trevor there. Short time for Chumley and Frannick. 20 second sprint here. A couple of fakes from both guys. But no one really throwing caution to the wind just yet. <laughs> Not seeing these two slow down very much, huh? The grappling has been there the entire match. No doubt the most competitive match we've seen this afternoon. We expected no less from Frannick and Shumley here at 157. And Jared Frannick not only doing it on the mat, academically as well, two-time reigning winner of the NCAA Elite 90 award given to the wrestler with the highest GPA at the national tournament. And Frannick able to escape away. Took a little longer than Chumley, but just six seconds of ride time for Chumley. All to wrestle for here in the final 100 seconds at 157. Hand fighting now leads to a shot from Jared Frannick. Rolling around now Chumley back up. Frannick will look to isolate a leg here and Hopefully not get his ankles, <laughs> ankles tangled up here like we're seeing now. Really not seeing the, you know, the, the attack rates here slow down. So these guys are looking pretty fresh given all the attacking that they're doing in this match. Chumley looking pretty composed and Frannick's on the line first. So, Well, the tension in Welsh Ryan Arena here is palpable. Iowa fans, you have Northwestern fans, both sets of supporters just looking on at this incredible display of athleticism. Jared Frannick, Trevor Chumley. Can someone get it done here inside of 45 seconds? Iowa Hawkeye fans just doing a great job of filling Welsh Ryan here. Well, now Frannick in, and Frannick unable to run around the back. Trevor Chumley just uh -huh. able to keep his hands locked around Jared Frannick's left leg to avoid that takedown. Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable defense from Trevor Chumley. Super impressive, just wrestling through that position. Would have thought he was, you know, completely dead to rights, and... Not so much. Well, that was the cleanest opportunity we've seen from these wrestlers here in this match. And all credit to Trevor Chumley, Jared Frannick as well for even finding that, but Chumley to just able 
to get himself out of danger. And we will see a match at this duel go to overtime. Sudden victory between Trevor Chumley and Jared Frannick. Jared Frannick, 1-0 in sudden victory this season. Took down Kale Swenson at the Soldier Salute. Trevor Chumley, one win of his own in the tiebreaker period. Two minutes here in our first sudden victory. First wrestler to score points will take the win. He escapes from both wrestlers. The only points we have on, our, on the board. No shortage of, uh, of attacks here. Both seeing these guys, you know, snapping and, and, and getting their opponents stepping pretty hard. Chumley tries to shrug Frannick off. But man, we've seen some heavy collar ties, some heavy grappling. And now Frannick in on a single leg. Yeah, just timed that, that step of Chumley so nicely. Now Frannick trying to get his left leg around. Trevor Chumley in a really tough position here, and it is Jared Frannick who gets it done. Frannick had an opportunity late in the last minute or two of the third period. But here in sudden victory, he makes no mistake. He gets it done. 18th win of the season for Jared Frannick to cap off the last five. Two top, two top 15 wrestlers, Michael Caliendo for the Iowa Hawkeyes, transfer from North Dakota State. Sophomore, was an All-American last year, and he'll face off against Max Mayfield of Northwestern. Well, the cheers for Michael Caliendo, just a little bit louder than the rest of his Iowa Hawkeyes teammates. Went to Batavia High School in Illinois, first state champion in program history, and all of Batavia wrestling here sitting just behind us to support their own in Michael Caliendo as he gets a chance to take down another ranked wrestler. That last match before the break, uh, you know, Obviously, that didn't go Chumley's way, but man, did both those guys compete really, really hard. And, um, you know, for, for the rest of the Wildcats lineup, it's like these guys are going to feel off that energy and, and that performance and, and just overall effort from Chumley. So, well, Michael Caliendo, so young, but such a good wrestler. 46 and 6 in his career, and already a takedown from Michael Caliendo. Slips underneath the arm of Max Mayfield. Super slick little boot scoot there from Caliendo. And Michael Caliendo just keeping himself inside of the circle, but they'll return back to the middle. And These Haw Hawkeyes are just so great at gaming the edge of the mat and, and, and using their opponent's pressure to you know fight back in or to avoid that, that stall call getting pushed out. And, and uh, you saw that in Caliendo's. Little take down there. And some cupping marks on Max Mayfield's back. Went through a war against Nebraska's Antrell Taylor on Friday. That one to sudden victory. And Caliendo looking for his 10th straight win. And in his career, the magic number 14. He has never lost to a wrestler ranked lower than 14th. Max Mayfield ranked number 15. So one of those two will go today. Either Mayfield will take down Caliendo or Caliendo will continue that streak of ranked wins. No takedown there, but just love the way that Caliendo is, is moving forward and, and getting Mayfield's butt up to the edge of the mat there. Really puts puts Max Mayfield in a spot to where he's got to, you know, get get really fight to get back into the center of the mat to, to get, get back to control there, so. When Michael Caliendo was within a hair of getting the second takedown of Another this boot match. Another attempt there. Caliendo just finding himself moving Mac to the edge of the mat again. It's paying off. Another takedown for Michael Caliendo, just so smooth. Really feels like nothing phases him. 
Yeah, Caliendo and the Hawkeyes are away here, but they <laughs> don't have a shortage of support, you know, in, in terms of Caliendo's uh, hometown community and and uh, just general Hawkeye fans here in Welsh Ryan. So it's great for the sport. Creating some buzz and, and filling this arena. Stall call issued to Max Mayfield. Caliendo has been the aggressor for the majority of this first period. Just 15 seconds left. Can Caliendo get another takedown? Or can Mayfield get one of his own? That's a dangerous, dangerous game to be playing there, hanging out on the edge of the mat and getting shot out. You know, it puts a puts the ref in a tough spot to where he might have to chuck up a stall call depending on depending on how it's looking. Tom Brands encouraged with that first period performance from Michael Caliendo. Last year at the Big Tens, Max Mayfield placing fifth, went four and two. Struggled a little bit against his ranked Big Ten opponents this season. Losses to Dean Hamity of Wisconsin, Caleb Fish of Michigan State. And then as we mentioned, Antrell Taylor of Nebraska on Friday. Mayfield's one of those guys that's, you know, right there with, with the best guys in the country and just a matter of piecing it together and finding his attacks to, to make it happen. And the double whammy for Max Mayfield. Not only did he get hit with the second stall call, which gives a point to Caliendo, but also got taken down right here in front of our announce table. Caliendo will uh, elect to go, go up to his feet there. He's, again, moving forward and just totally pressuring Mayfield. Puts, him, puts Max in a tough spot where he's got to take, take shots. And Caliendo's capitalizing for sure. And these new look Hawkeyes, it's been a while since we've seen just offense after offense from these Hawkeye wrestlers. And Caliendo will once again elect to start on his feet. Really trying to get another tech fall for the Hawkeyes. That's the thing though, I, I, I really do love the two to three point takedown change now because you gotta think if you're Max and you get a takedown here, um, can, just changes the dynamic of the match. Really incentivizing these guys to, to score and create as much action as possible on their feet, so. Caliendo is looking pretty pretty bulletproof right now. Just in his demeanor and, and the way he's getting back to the center of the mat quick and just directing the wrestling right. It's, it's, it's nice, nice little shot there from Max. Well, another stall call on Max Mayfield. One more point for Michael Caliendo. And Andrew, that goes for both wrestlers. You know, maybe in years past, you've seen wrestlers less content to give away those escape points because takedown's only two. But now you can be much more efficient if you're Michael Caliendo. You don't necessarily have to try to keep Mayfield grounded. You can cut him and then get, get a couple takedowns. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's what we're seeing with, you know, the, the front half of the lineup there outside of Chumley. Uh, these Hawkeye guys are just so quick to be hunting down those takedowns and, and, and cutting their opponent, right? Cutting these Wildcats up to their feet and just directing the action. And and right there at the buzzer, they will give it to Michael Caliendo. Another tech ball win. Little flex for the hometown crowd as the Hawkeye fans in attendance go crazy. Coming out of it, Troy Fisher, ranked 24, taking on an unranked Aiden Riggins. Riggins starting the season at 174, won his dual meet against Peter Acciardi of Cal Baptist, and has gone 0-6 since moving up to 184. The only wins for the Hawkeyes at this weight this season from true freshman Gabe Arnold has not traveled trying to maintain that red shirt. Fisher's just so solid. He's he's one of those guys, you know, unfortunately he's had to uh, fight the injury bug the last couple of years, but man, that's, that really is not holding him back. And 
I'd love getting to, uh, you know, just see his, his work ethic and persistence, you know, pay off the last couple of years. Such a rock solid wrestler. He was uh it's one of my one of my tougher goes in the practice room was wrestling with Troy Fisher. It's just so heavy. You're seeing those hands right there. It's the Kansas farm strength paying off, right? And now Aiden Riggins in on a single leg. Troy Fisher doing his best to try and split away, but Aiden Riggins not letting him go gets the first points. Yeah, how about it? Just Riggins wasting no time there. Quick escape from Troy Fisher. Naden Riggins giving up a little bit of weight to Troy Fisher, just about five pounds. Aiden Riggins started last season at 157, has wrestled there at 65, at 74, and now at 84. Both those guys kind of locked up. The rough will blow it dead. And this another weight occupied by one of the guys not currently wrestling for the Hawkeyes in Abe Asad. NCAA tournament qualifier. Another uh, respectable shot attempt there from Riggins. As he looks to get, get back in the win column there. Riggins wrestling a really close match on Friday against Dylan Connell of Illinois. Lost in sudden victory. Troy Fisher, on the other hand, took on Lenny Pinto, ranked number three. Held him to a decision. Really tough match. Troy Fisher in it till the very end. Yeah, I thought a couple of those, you know, Friday night, uh, just positions between Fisher and Pinto, like, could have gone either way. So if you're Fisher, you got to be, you know, totally – dissatisfied with that outcome obviously but encouraged you know encouraged and, and hungry to get Pinto again because he's right there man he's so tough and you're seeing that here I think this is one of the first guys in the Wildcat lineup that we're seeing like doing a better job of owning the mat like right here see how Troy's getting his butt to the center of the mat and looking to put this this Hawkeye back in uh, in danger on the edge Tom Rand's up off his feet calling for Aiden Riggins to circle towards the center Troy Fisher is qualified for the NCAA tournament twice in these past two seasons. Went two and two at last year's edition. Again, at 174, this is his first full year at 184. Started it off with a seventh place finish at the Midlands. Troy Fisher just trying to get that escape. Is able to do so, looking for a takedown on the edge of the mat is Fisher. Ready? Yeah, you see that sense of urgency coming from Troy Fisher just with a quick little little quad pod up to a fast escape and then wasting no time getting right back in on Riggins' legs. So. The lead in favor of Aiden Riggins, 3-2. to two. 30 seconds into our second period, still just the 20 seconds of riding time for Aiden Riggins. Aiden Riggins looking to snap, but Troy Fisher not letting him go. Some more heavy, uh, authoritative hand fighting here from both these guys. Just two physical, physical guys at 184. And for Northwestern, at the meeting between these two teams last year, were able to pull off wins at 133, 149, and 197, courtesy of a guy sitting to my right, Andrew Davison. We're not able to get one here at 184, but Troy Fisher just a point down. Plenty of time left to go to get a result over Aiden Riggins. Yeah, Troy's got to have this one. You got to think he's, uh, he'll look to maybe elevate this leg. Rest will blow it dead. Short 
time in the second period. Tell you what, though, you know, I've seen so many times where one or two point lead on Troy Fisher going into the third period is just nowhere near enough because the guy, guy has a motor and hats off to Riggins from not shying away from this opportunity to uh, wrestle a tough Wildcat here. So, got a good period in front of us. Aiden Riggins, a redshirt freshman, looking for his first win in a dual meet at 184 pounds this season. He has a one point lead going into our last two minutes. And a two time state champion at 152 pounds and 160 pounds at Waverly Shell Rock High School. Only four losses in his high school career. 15 and 15 as a collegiate wrestler. And you have to think that it would do mountains for his confidence if he's able to find a result against Troy Fisher. Troy Fisher looking for a shot. Aiden Riggins, one of his own. Seeing a couple fully committed shot attempts from uh, Fisher there. You gotta think that'll pay off in, in either you know three points or, uh, or a stall call. Well, Troy Fisher was close there at the edge of the mat, but Aiden Riggins, good awareness to spread out his legs, get his hands around the waist of Troy Fisher to deny the Wildcat a takedown. Yeah, it's some pretty impressive uh, mat awareness there from Riggins. Like you said, Matt, just knowing when you're close to the edge and making it look like you know, you're know you wanting to defend there and kind of gaming the edge a bit. 60 seconds left to go. Aiden Riggins up two points. Troy Fisher needs a takedown. Yeah, we could see this go to OT if Fisher can, can score and Riggins, Riggins pops out for one. Ride time now yeah. a non-factor. Just look at the, the willpower there from, from, from Troy Fisher. He's got to isolate that leg and Danger called, both wrestlers will return to the middle. A little blood time for Troy Fisher, check on his nose. Both these guys will get a little reset and uh, chat with their coaches for a sec too and game plan this last 30 second sprint. And Andrew, if you're Troy Fisher, what are you looking to do in this position? What are you going for against Aiden Riggins with just 30 seconds left in the third period? Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a gotta have a gotta have it moment. Gotta have it moment. So, you know, Troy's Troy's not had a ton of success with that single leg. I'm surprised he hasn't been, you know, getting back to his uh, his signature staple high C. So I'd imagine maybe he'll he'll be looking to snap and, and fake and really throw the kitchen sink at that that other side of the body there, like he is right there. Stall calling Aiden Riggins, but Riggins doing really well to keep his hips away from Troy Fisher. 15 seconds left. Troy Fisher trying to take down Aiden Riggins, rolling around to the middle of the mat. And now it is do or die time for Troy Fisher. Goes straight for the left leg of Aiden Riggins, but a big sprawl for the Hawkeye wrestler. And Tom Brands. Definitely letting the smile come out now as Aiden Riggins is finally able to get a win at this weight. Cope's ride on Ben Keeter. Yes, he is back in the lineup after making his debut against Minnesota. And the football wrestler double athlete will take on Northwestern's Jack Jessen. Already you can see the height advantage for Ben Keeter, almost a head taller than Jack Jessen. Two lighter athletic heavyweights here. Jessen in on a nice single, getting squashed by Keeter. Ben Keeter gets the takedown, now looking for the turn is Ben Keeter. Jack Jessen is reeling. Ben Keeter looking to force Jack Jessen into the mat. 
what a moment this would be for the football player. Ben Keeter looking to turn, and Ben Keeter gets the turn inside of 45 seconds. Oh my goodness, Ben Keeter, have yourself a moment. Yeah, it's rock solid top to bottom there in the Hawkeyes line.